Welcome into another special edition of Sports Nightly. I'm Alex Wilcox. Let's get right to it. Big news from the Marathon Classic as our media partner, the Toledo Blade, broke on Thursday. The tournament will be held without fans due to the coronavirus pandemic. We have been talking to a lot of different outlets that have helped us through this process. But I think just in the past week with everything happening, not only within all of the US, but right here in Ohio and you know, within Sylvania, Toledo, we made the decision that you know safety is our number one priority and I think it takes precedent over a lot. So we wanted safety to, to be a priority for, for spectators, for fans, for LPGA players, for our staff. So I think going with the no spectators is the way to meet that goal of safety. We have an unbelievable community and the support and the feedback that we have been getting, even though it has been no spectator, spectators, it has been extremely positive. I mean, the way that people rally around, such a great cause, and knowing that our mission and our goal is to raise funds for 25 local children's charities for 2020. So we really looked at a bunch of different models to see and to know, like, we want to run this tournament. We want this event to happen. We want our charities to thrive. So what is the best possible situation in order for us to do that where our tournament, our staff will be okay and then we can still fundraise for our charities. The tournament is still scheduled to take place August 6th through 9th at Highland Meadows Golf Club. All four rounds can be seen on Golf Channel. The high school football season may be in doubt, but that's not stopping Scott High School football coach Chris McBriar from coaching up young men right here in our community. He started the Men's Empowerment Summit, a free 10-week program that teaches youth in our community valuable life skills each week. This week, the guys learned how to properly iron their shirts and pants. All items that were used were donated from the community, so the guys were able to take home their own iron and ironing boards at the end of the day. The summit runs every Sunday at 5 p.m. at 3 East Bancroft Street, and any male from ages 13 to 19 are welcome to join. Coach McBriar will have a long-lasting impact for all of these kids here in the Toledo area, so it's only right that we feature him in our No Days Off. This is a week two of the, the, Mail, the Me Summit, which I call the Male Empowerment Summit, in which we just give a, uh, we just open up an avenue for a young man to be able to um, learn some values about themselves, and then hopefully throughout this they'll have a purpose for themselves. And, and, through, and through doing that, they can be able to use it for game day, dressing up, uh, know how to iron a shirt, and that's today, week two, is definitely uh, teaching them how to iron. When you have purpose, right, when you, when you know you have purpose and you, you can value life a little bit better, you actually are more destined and, and on track to be a better uh, individual. So giving them at a young age, giving them these tools, they can be able to teach somebody else. Um, that's why it's called the male empowerment, because now they're empowered to be able to give it back somewhere else. So I'm, I'm encouraged through that. We are a community, and, and when I, if you break down the word um, come, and then you got unity. And, and, and in the Greek, the word come means with. So that means with unity. So if we're going to call ourselves a community, then we need to operate with unity amongst each other. So that's just the borderline, the, the, the ultimate goal. For me, it means everything. Um, so like for me, I grew up, uh, and I didn't really have anybody that taught me about wearing suits or dressing nice. Um, I think I learned how to start ironing clothes in maybe seventh grade and my cousin taught me. Um, so I think a lot of times parents aren't getting really the opportunity to teach their children stuff like this. Uh, some parents don't even know how to do it themselves. So it's important that for those who do know to give back and really help to pour into our youth especially because if we want to see them go somewhere then we got to do what it takes to help push them there. I think it'll st stick with them when it's time for them to do a job interview and they need to wear a suit. And for some people, they don't wear it that often. So at least knowing how to do it helps. Otherwise, you have to pay somebody else to do it. And it's better if you know how to do it yourself. Uh, it's very amazing, you know, uh, the time that he's taking just to take his time out to give us the proper learning and just investing in us is a great opportunity and I'm glad that I'm a part of that. You know, not a lot of people take the time out and think about people like us in our age. So his, him taking the time out to come help us is a big part of the community and helps us you know, grow as people and men. 
every week on Sundays at five o'clock. We'll be at three East Bancroft Street, and you want more? Any male is welcome to come at this time. Uh, we will be working on the We Summit, which is the Women Empowerment Summit. Uh, so any male from the ages of 13 to 19 can come. Uh, there's no registration fee. Uh, there's no registration packet. Uh, the parent, all they have to do is come and actually just sign a, a waiver of liability. So that's about it. Um, we're, we're always constantly looking for young men. We're always constantly looking for uh, uh, help to uh, come. So please don't, don't hesitate. Just please, please, please come. I got to see if coach can make an exception on that age limit and let me take a few classes. Elsewhere in high school, lacrosse continues to be one of the fastest growing sports in the nation. According to U.S. Lacrosse, the sport grew by 80% from 2007 to 2017. Now, Anthony Wayne has long sponsored a boys team, but only in the last few years have they added girls lacrosse. And as Mark Coons reports, the team is trying to cradle the growth in the White House community. Without a season this past spring, the Anthony Wayne girls lacrosse team lost precious momentum in building and growing their program. This month, they're trying to arrest that slide with player-led lacrosse 101 sessions. Captains are assuming the role as both recruiter and coaches, bringing in new players while teaching the basics of the game. It was kind of different because it's like everyone has different skills, but it was good just to, it honestly helped me to grow so I can see, wow, I should probably work on this more too, just for myself. And it was nice helping other people learn the sport and hopefully fall in love with the sport as I did. Oh yeah, 100% because like I've learned from, you know, people that were older than me and but it was really weird to be in that position because I, I started freshman year like and I still don't know everything there is to know and it was weird to be able to like teach people that are interested and knowing that I was in that spot just two years ago. It's a little different. Um, I think definitely different from playing but we've learned from people like Jordan how to coach and how to teach and I think that being one of the girls that like knows what they're doing and being able to show other people how to play the game is it's really cool. About 20 players attended the first practice, a pleasant surprise. I did not expect this many people and it made me really happy seeing a lot of people, a lot of them, a lot of them were freshmen trying to come out and just like I was when I was a freshman trying to find a new sport to play. A hundred percent, like we did not expect to see that many new players come out. I mean, I personally did not. I knew we'd have some returning players, but I did not expect to see that many new girls interested in playing. There is plenty of proof that you don't have to play the game for years in order to quickly pick it up and potentially earn the opportunity to play at the next level. And I didn't start playing until my freshman year of high school, and then I, you know, I, I never knew anything about lacrosse at all, and then I ended up playing in the summer, and then I played indoor for the fall and the winter, and then by the end of my sophomore year, I was already being recruited by colleges for the summer. I mean, I started as a sophomore, so, you know, it's at this point, it's whenever, and if you can want to try it, like, that's all we care about. If you're going to come out and put effort in, you know, we need girls to keep this program going, and I think that, yeah, a really big part of it is being able to get your friends to just come out and try it. I kind of tell them, like, hey, it's not the same thing. Like, a lot of other sports may be kind of similar. It's just something different that not a lot of people have tried, and it's just, like such a team sport and like all of us are pretty much sisters on the team like we've grown so much and like we can count on each other for everything. I mean I kind of say like hey you don't do a spring sport like this is something if you don't have to have any experience to learn just come out just try it it's really fun you get to learn new things play with new people meet new people and yeah it's such a fun sport and like even all of a sudden my friends one time were like hey you know let's go play lacrosse and I was like sure why not and then once I started playing I was like wow like this is a lot different than a lot of the other sports I've played, and it's just, it's a lot of fun. I think the easiest part is definitely, like, kind of connecting with players. I think that everyone kind of goes through some of the same struggles, especially here, just because not everyone started at that young age. And I think having that and knowing people have your back because of that, it's really nice. But I think one of the hardest things is definitely be, being able to understand that it's not always going to be like working out. You're not always going to make a perfect pass. You're not always going to have a perfect shot, but understanding that, like, you'll have more chances. Having the courage to start and having, and like being able to come out here and learn is really, it's great and that's, but that's definitely the hardest, is just learning how to start. Don't be discouraged. I know I um, lacked confidence in myself, but in the end, you will grow if you continue to put effort in in the sport. I think it's a really big thing. Like Girls across is now like one of the new upcoming sports for girls and I think that growing it will definitely help bring a lot more talent to Northwest Ohio and kind of shine the light on it because I think there is a lot of athletic girls here that could easily be very good at those cross. 
Still a few more chances for Anthony Wayne students to attend a Lacrosse 101 session. For more information, contact Tiffany Tully at ttully at anthonywainelocalschools.org. At White House, Mark Hoots, BCSN. We're just getting started here on Sports Nightly. Coming up, Claire Dow hits the racetrack for a look at some local go-kart races. Plus, I take my lumps at Tanglewood Golf Course in the latest Glass City Golf. Sports Nightly is brought to you by Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. Doing it different, doing it right. Racing is one of those sports that hits you early and lasts a lifetime. A group of fans from throughout Northwest Ohio have created their own little circuit, taking turns hosting go-kart races at their individual backyard tracks. BCSN's Claire Dow takes us to Little D Raceway in Bradner for the latest race in the Idiot Series. In 2010, one of our competitors uh, built a little backyard track in his yard in Gibsonburg and a few of us just got together and played and we did that for several years, built a track at my place, there was a couple others, and then 2016 we decided to make a little series out of it where we did four races at four different tracks and it's all free, very few motor rules, so it's just really just to have a good time basically. And that first season we were drawing like six to eight carts and it started kind of catching on and we've grown a little bit every year and now this season um, we have uh, nine, nine total races at eight different racetracks um, all over for, as east, far east as Clyde, all the way uh, we were, last weekend we were in Wauseon. So um, kind of all in that range and big track. This today is the smallest track we race at all year and um, it's just, it's all free. It's all, we race for a trophy, that's it. No money, you don't have to pay to race and you don't get paid for winning. So it's just for a trophy. And um, you know, the, the real, the purpose is just to get together and have a great time. We race hard, but shake hands and laugh at the end of the day. This past Sunday, three generations of Kirchen Bowers raced in Bradner. Clay, his son Indy, who competed in the kids division, and Clay's father, Forrest. My family is from Indianapolis. I grew up around racing a lot, um, but we were never really involved in it, just big fans. And so, um, like about 10 years ago, I, I got into go-karting and then dragged my dad into it with me. <laughs> Raised my son with IndyCar and NASCAR, so we've always liked it, but I'm not mechanical, and Clay's always wanted to do it. So um, when he got a little older and could do some of it himself, uh, we just got involved with this go-kart league. Started off innocently, but grew into something quite quite cool. They definitely have a whole lot more ability than old grandpa does, but I just love being around it, and uh, I enjoy watching Clay and Indy. Um, he's got a name that fits it, being Indiana and Indy, um, but he, he loves it. He's a squirrely little kid, but he's, he's got a lot of go in him. Whether it's in your blood or you're new to the sport, these races make for a fun afternoon. My family uh, is into racing. They've raced sprint cars on, on dirt. I grew up watching that. And then um, my cousin Tony, he's one of the drivers here and he's one of the series promoters. There's two of them and my cousin Tony's one of them. And he just got me into it. I started watching it. I was helping uh, making the, I helped my cousin Tony make the trophy for last year. And then I'm like, I gotta do this. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta buy a cart. So I did. It's all I think about. It's a, I'm having the time of my life. 
when I'm not racing, I'm thinking about racing. So, yeah. When I first got into it, I didn't know anybody here except for my cousin Tony and then one other guy. And uh, what has been surprising is I've always kind of assumed like the racing community was this closed community and people not sharing their setups and secrets and stuff. That's, I was completely wrong. Uh, you ask for help, people will jump over to help you out, get you set up, something breaks, people are letting you borrow parts. I think I've raced in five races this year and I've had to borrow parts in four of those races. So it's been a really good, awesome community. In Bradner, Claire Dow, BCSN. The next race is scheduled for August 2nd at the Kingsway Speedway in Fremont. As the summer reaches its midway point, more and more people are getting outside and hitting the links. In this edition of Glass City Golf, we head to Tanglewoods Golf Course in Perrysburg. Well, for our latest edition of my uh, Glass City Golf Embarrassment, we are here at Tanglewood Golf Club, and I'm joined uh, by Tom Blanchard, who's the owner of Tanglewood. Tom, you've owned this place since 2009. It's obviously a special place for you. What do you like about this course? Well, it requires some shot making. It's uh, not real long, but you got to pay attention to what you're doing. A lot of trees, and uh, you can score well if you can hit the ball fairly straight. If you hit it crooked, you're, you're going to score high. I can't hit the ball fairly straight, so this is going to be fun. Uh, and tell me a little bit about the hole we're playing. We're playing a hole 17, which uh, I understand is a bit of a challenging one. It's about 260 yards. You got to hit it about 220 off the tee. You give yourself a, a short shot into the green. The green's fairly long, uh, tilted forward. So uh, with a good drive in the left side of the fairway, short iron into the green gives yourself an opportunity to make birdie and hopefully no more than par. And I know you were a little worried about me beating you on this hole. Uh, I can assure you I, and, and assure everyone that that is not going to happen. The question is always, how many balls am I going to lose on this one hole? I'll put three in my pocket. We'll see if any of them come back. Oh, no. We definitely can hit another one there. Here we go. Perfect. Right about there. That's yeah. pretty good. Low little streamer right down the left side. Where we wanted to be. There you go. We should have had you first so you could show me how it's done. There you go. Well, we're left at least. Right off the tree. High and left this time. I'm all over the place. And we're going to ignore the like six extra shots I took, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm there in three. Well, we'll count two. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy. So Tom, you've owned this place for uh, 12 years now. What's your favorite spot of, or what's your favorite thing about Tanglewood? Oh, definitely the, the, the people that come out and play on a regular basis. You get to know them real well. And uh, uh, you know, our league base is real strong. So we enjoy having them. Uh, with the COVID-19 this year, our restaurant has been closed down because of all the restrictions. But uh, all the people that play out here in our leagues and regulars uh, support us real well, so it's been very good. But, uh, you know, just the people. Yeah. How, how has business been for you guys, you know, dealing with the pandemic? It's been okay. You know, it's, uh, it's down some, for sure. Our outing business has been affected by it tremendously. Right. Uh, but the regular play has been okay. Um, you know, we've, we're getting through it, and uh, I think we'll come out, you know, okay for the end of the year. But, uh, you know, next year, hopefully, things will be a little bit better. Absolutely. And uh, you, you told me that, uh, you know, this is your 12th year owning the course and uh, you know, you're thinking about possibly retirement in the future and might even uh, consider selling the course. Well, uh, it is for sale currently. Uh, because I'm getting a little bit older, uh, our kids are grown, my wife and I would like to travel a little bit, so yeah. we, are, we are trying to sell it. And uh, you know, if we do, that's great. If we don't, I'll be back next year and run it again. <laughs> so it's, you know. Not, not a bad job to have. Exactly. Better hit this good because otherwise, uh, I don't have another ball. I don't have another ball. You don't have any other balls because you've given them all to me to hit. <laughs> that might go in. Oh, what a shot. Well, I told you, if you hit it on the left side of the fairway, you'd have a short wedge into the green with a chance to make birdie and hopefully at worst case par. So. That's right. You've got to tap in for birdie right there. Let's hope. Not quite as good as the master. 
<laughs> but at least she's on. That's right. All right, Alex, knock it in for a par. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> just yeah, short. Just short. For birdie. A nice tap in. How about that? Well done, Tom. Thank you. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, having us out. This was a lot of fun playing uh, playing your course here at Tanglewood. This is a really nice course. I hope a uh, course that a lot of people come out to and play. Uh, you guys offer lessons? Uh, yeah, I offer short game lessons just because we don't have a driving range. We don't have the facility sure. uh, to accommodate a, a long game. Sure. But uh, chipping lessons up to about 130 yards, uh, putting lessons, things like that I do. Lord knows I can use it. Next on Sports Nightly, we hit the diamond for another Stars and Stripes. Sports Nightly is brought to you by Grogenstown Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram, where nobody treats you better. Tonight we bring you another segment in our Stars and Stripes series, where we highlight local referees and officials in our area that give their time to help our local athletes. For this one, we head out to Lucas County Rec Center Ball Diamond as we feature Central Catholic alum Matt Mernon. Matt has been an umpire for over 10 years now, and his passion to get involved with officiating started at a young age while watching his father referee local basketball games. Matt followed in dad's footsteps and started officiating basketball, but then transitioned to the ball diamond, and he's stayed there ever since. He says it's important to give back to the community that has given so much to him. Here is his story. You guys are home? Alrighty, good luck. Um, basically, you know, just growing up as a little kid, thinking, okay, where, where can I go with this? Um, playing ball in the backyard with the siblings and everything like that. And finally just got to grade school and, you know, buddies and I just started playing and had fun with it and continued on. Bye, ball! Watching, uh, growing up, watching my dad officiate basketball helped me a lot. Uh, going to his games just got me into it and um, just like being around the game. I guess just being out here, growing up, watching all the stuff happen, thinking this is something for me. You know, I want to be be able to teach the kids, you know, a little bit about the game and have fun doing it. Right. Communication with your base umpire definitely definitely goes a long way. Usually before the game, we kind of talk over the guidelines. Okay, who's going to cover what, and um, you know, basically watch the box and you know the little things. Coming down. Just being around the kids, seeing them have fun, and me being a part of their fun makes me, you know, enjoy it a lot more. I've, I've done some softball and seeing some of the younger kids grow up playing some softball, it, it kind of reminds me of the good old days, you know. <laughs> right! i got a little boy. He's eight. He loves baseball. He loves sports. I do it for him, you know. That way he can see me, you know, work the games and, you know, get, get excited about that. I think that... That's my biggest part is that I want to see my boy, you know, see me do good and see what he can possibly do when he gets older. Outside? I think it's something to get into, honestly. Um, it's fun, relaxing, and if you love being around the game, I definitely suggest getting into it. The biggest thing is just have a positive attitude, hustle, and just love the game. We're not done yet. Sports Nightly will return with a look at the week ahead right after this.
Sports Nightly on BCSN is presented by Team Sports. Earlier this week, the Toledo Mud Hens organization hosted a blood drive Monday to collect for the Red Cross, which is running dangerously low on supplies as the pandemic continues. As an added incentive for people to donate, the club offered 25% off gear at the Swamp Shop. You know, for us to be able to offer um, a place for people to go and donate to help the need means everything because community and being able to give back, especially during the pandemic and everything that's happening, we were really happy that we could continue to do it again this year. Because of what's been going on with COVID-19, many of the businesses that normally have drives downtown are not having them. So I reached out to the Mud Hens and they agreed to have their annual event as planned. And I told them, I said, I'm so grateful because we have not been down here and people have been missing the Mud Hens and you know, can't come out and support them. So this is donor's way of being able to do that. In all, 33 people donated with 36 pints of blood collected. One pint of blood can save up to three lives. One donor even reached her 10 gallon mark. And if you're still looking for that Mud Hens fix, we've got another Mud Hens Monday to get you through. We're taking a look back at the 2005 home opener between the Hens and the Durham Bulls, a season that ended in a championship. That'll start Monday night at 7 p.m. And that's just the start of an exciting week here on BCSN. Our BCSN Classics continue Wednesday night with Ottawa Hills boys soccer winning a state championship in 2008. And then on Friday, the snowball. 2008 Southview football with a goal line stands in the wintry weather. You can catch all of that right here on BCSN. That's going to do it for us here at Sports Nightly. Same time, same place next week. Good night.